Hey guys, welcome back to Cause 3D, and today we're going to talk about the electronics on the inside of R2. We're going to do our best. Since it is mounted in there, it's going to be a little difficult to get things on camera, so we're probably going to use some handhelds. So take your motion sickness pills, and let's get into it. So we have a close-up as best we can here, just so you can see what's going on on the internals. And you see that our, our board has been mounted back in R2's body a little bit with the help of these uh, th little panels that we 3D printed. And we're gonna just power us on here. Everything is plugged in. As you can see, we've got our uh, batteries hooked up and we'll get some power here. And then I'm gonna turn this over to Zach and he's gonna be able to explain a little better what exactly we are looking at. So we'll start with the power coming in and go from there. So you can see we've got two 20 volt Bauer batteries from Harbor Freight, and that's what we're using to run it. We're in series. So we're actually supplying 40 volts to a voltage regulator that's in the back that takes it from 40 volts down to 24 volts. You can see it tucked in down there. So that then goes up to these rails here. And so there's a positive and a negative of our 24 volts. And we put a little voltage meter in there so that you can see that you are indeed getting your 24 volts. Then that goes over into another voltage regulator in the back that drops it down to 12 volts on these two and five volts on these two. I know you can run five volts off of like your siren and your uh, saber tooth, but we decided that just for simplicity, we wanted it on its own rail and on its own voltage regulator so that if we added some extra stuff later, we had plenty of room. So that's what, so you can see 12 volts here, five volts here. And then from there, we just break out into our different, uh, different, things so we've got our um arduino up here that's what's controlling everything it has padwan 360 on it so that's why we're using an xbox 360 controller to do all our controls and that is like the brains of everything so it's hooked into a microsoft xbox 360 pc adapter which we found that it has to be yeah, it has to be the An Microsoft actual one Microsoft because brand. that's what's hard coded into the Padwan 360 code. Um, we tried a couple of generic ones and never could get them to work right. Uh, but then it goes from there, it t sends its signal out to your saber tooth for your foot controls. So that's your left and right drives on your, to moving backwards, forward, left, right. Um, and that's through this wire here that runs up. Then this piece over here is the siren. It runs the head motor. So he swings him left and right. And we've got a, we've got a 12 volt, 300 RPM uh, motor for that, that runs, runs his head. Then we've also got, there's a, I don't remember what that thing exactly was called, but it's an MP3 player that is controlled by the Arduino. And it ha plays different files so you get your sound through an amp up here. And then there's two speakers mounted into the front of him. There's, there's provisions in Mr. Badalay's files for mounting, I believe they were three inch speakers to that. Then really about the only other thing we've got is off of our five volts down here, we run up into a um, slip ring. Slip, yeah, slip ring. So we can get our five volts up to the dome, dome for the lights up in the dome. And really, that's, it's really pretty simple when it all works. 
Yeah, and when we were building this one, we had quite a bit of problems with the uh, with the non Microsoft controller dongle. It uh, the receiver didn't work, and we ended up having to get another Arduino, thinking that it was something that we had done incorrectly on installing the software on the Arduino. And uh, it turns out it was just that simple. It has to be a. I've seen other videos. We we attempted to take a non-generic one and convert it over, but going on eBay, spending the what was it, like forty, fifty I bucks. I don't even think uh, it was that much. I think it was like yeah, twenty-five bucks. It was just a lot easier to get the Microsoft brand Xbox control. So about the only other thing we did that was kind of, I guess, a little bit different than what maybe you've seen. This is our power. That's our overall power. So before the batteries that switches that off so that we can take the batteries in and out and not power anything and then this we wanted a manual switch on the saber tooth so that we could if we were you know in the booth or something and just running him we could turn the power to the saber tooth completely off so that if somebody picks up the controller and messes with it we don't have to worry about him knocking our booth over. That's about it. So it once you hit the power button, everything else, the sound, the the head motor, the lights all kick on, and then you have to kick this guy on to get the foot drives going. Yeah, even though there's a redundant safety on the controller uh, to arm the foot motors, we just in our case, because we're at conventions all the time with these, and R2 typically sits in a corner that people have access to see him and touch him, that uh, we didn't want to have to worry about that control or something crazy happening or interference signal or something, anything. Well, and if somebody wanted to, if we wanted to show somebody how it worked, it, we don't have to worry about them hitting a button and turning something on and now R2 is driving across the convention. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, the reason we did this part of the video and not step by step is the directions are great. Uh, it's, it's all very self-explanatory, but we just wanted to show you what our setup was. And we talked about these rails earlier. The reason we use the rails is because we were just more confident dealing with that power source and that situation and then we were pulling it out of the siren or the saber tooth or jumping it from one component to the other and you have you just have a lot more ability to add and, and remove stuff fairly easily so that's pretty much it the only other thing that we can stand up here the only other thing that i'm not keen on yet is this is actually the wiring that goes out to the drive motors and i've currently got them on these i don't know i'm going to switch them over to something a little more permanent more of a more reliable plug at some point um down in there you can see our speakers are down there of course you can see our our front panel lights are lit up currently and uh that's that's pretty much it guys it's a daunting task but it's not undoable if zach and i can do it anybody can do it trust me well guys that's it uh thanks for joining us today hopefully this kind of gave you an idea you know i, I we talked to a lot of people at conventions that come up to us and see our 3d printed r2 and they say oh you know i've started it and I, it's it's daunting I'm, I'm dreading the electronics i always dreaded the electronics too so it's it's not as scary is what you think it is especially if you take your time double check things and follow the directions there's all kinds of stuff out there on badley's uh youtube channel or uh, i'm sorry on his facebook there's support on there um you can find articles all over you know the the astromech forums and everything else but we just hope that maybe this gives you some relief if you're starting this project and you don't dread the electronics because it's not as hard as we thought it was going to be. So uh, stay tuned. Make sure you like and subscribe, of course, for us. 
and uh, stay tuned because we're gonna we're gonna hook him up. We're gonna play some footage of the very first time we drove him, and then we'll give you some more uh, refined footage of him driving now. Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only help. <laughs> 